What comes to mind when I say druggy, alcoholic, junkie, meth head, dope head? If I was to ask, you'd probably tell me things like dirty, homeless, dropout, bad parent, loser, criminal, dangerous. Yet, is this true? This is a story about drugs, drug use, and what we as individuals, families, and communities can do. Looking at me, you can see that I'm a woman, that I'm white. My accent suggests that I wasn't born in New Zealand, and how I talk, that I've probably received an education. But other than that, you know nothing about me. You don't know whether I'm married, have children, or my sexual orientation. Or even what I do for a living. Originally, I trained as a lawyer and had a corporate life before taking a different career path. Today, I'm the executive director of the Needle Exchange Program. Looking at me, you would never in your wildest dreams assume that I was a London-based, pinstriped lawyer. So, let's do a little experiment around assumptions. Stand up if you know someone who's had a problem with drugs. Stand up. Have a look around. There's a few of us here today. Thank you, take a seat. Almost all of us use drugs. Some are legal, like alcohol, panadine, and caffeine, and some illegal, like methamphetamine, heroin, and ecstasy. But ultimately, they're all drugs because they all change the way we feel, which is great, because I love coffee. <laughs> but let's talk about illegal drugs. In New Zealand, we know that almost 50% of the adult population will have used an illicit drug. So in this room of 320 people, that's at least 150 of you. Now, many of you have probably sat there and are thinking, well, that's not me, and it's not the people that I came with here today, so uh, it must be them. Oh, look, yes, it's probably those people at the end of our row. <laughs> and some of you will be sat there thinking, uh-huh, she's talking about me. Where's this one going to go? One of the things about drug use, which we often don't talk much about, is that it's possible to use drugs without experiencing any problems, difficulties, or developing a dependency. And I'm not talking here just about soft drugs like cannabis. Contrary to what you read and hear in the media, it is possible to use so-called hard drugs recreationally. Drug use does not necessarily result in dependency. So back to this room as a mini New Zealand. 150 of you will have used an illicit drug. Of that 150, around 30 of you will have experienced problems or difficulties as a result of your drug use. And of that, of that 30, 23 of you will have self-changed. Around six or seven of you will have needed to access help and support around your drug use. Drug use is normal. We found evidence of drug use in many early civilizations. Drugs are great. I can't get up out of bed in the morning without my cup of coffee. It's a stimulant, it wakes me up, it helps me get up and face the day. Somehow the day always feels so much better after that first cup of coffee. Sound familiar? Many different cultures use drugs as part of rituals, ceremonies, and activities. 
In the Christian church, wine is taken as part of communion. In the Jewish community, alcohol is integral to Kiddush. In South America, we chew the coca leaf as a medicine, a food substitute, or part of an initiation ceremony. It's when we take these rituals and customs away that often the problems occur. So it's not the drug that's bad, but the way and why we're using. However, reading the media and listening to the politicians, you really wouldn't think that this is the case. In the 1960s, the world's governments committed themselves to the goal of a drug-free world through what has become the war on drugs. Have we achieved that goal? Well, drugs today are more available, stronger, cheaper, and more widely used than ever before. It doesn't sound like a great success to me. In South America, hundreds of thousands of people have died as a result of the violence linked to the war on drugs. What else has it achieved? We have the highest recorded level of drug overdose deaths. Drugs are in the hands of organized crime and criminals. What else has it achieved? People who use drugs are stigmatized, labeled, and criminalized. There's a lot of misinformation and myth about drugs and drug use. And much of this stems from the belief that people who use drugs are not you, not me, it's those people, it's them. It's those addicts, those druggies. It's not you and it's not me. But people who use drugs are our sons and our daughters, our mothers, our fathers, our brothers, our sisters, our aunts, our uncles, our cousins, our grandparents, our friends, and our workmates. It is you, and it is me, and it is around 150 at least of us in this room. So, what have we achieved? Well, this clearly tells us that we need to change our thinking and understanding about drug use. Using mind-altering substances is common, normal, usual, and found across civilizations, cultures, communities, and social groups. In fact, drug use is found in all social groups. Don't forget that first cup of coffee. Drug use is happening anyway, and the war on drugs is failing. So let's keep people safe. Let's work with them where they're at. Let's understand their drug use. A little information, advice, and support can stop problems developing in the first place, as well as reducing risk to those who use and those close to them. You're going to take that pill anyway, so why don't I test it for you and tell you what's in it, so that you can make an informed choice about what to do. You're going to inject, so why don't I give you new needles and syringes so that you don't contract or spread HIV or hepatitis C. Let me answer your questions honestly and have a realistic discussion about drugs so that you can make decisions. This is the essence of what harm reduction looks like. What we know is that blaming people, punishing them, stigmatizing them, and pushing people away doesn't work. The New Zealand Needle Exchange Program is one of New Zealand's most successful public health programs. And this year, we celebrate our 30th anniversary. Through a network of 22 exchanges and 190 pharmacies, last year we distributed 3.75 million needles. 
Internationally, HIV prevalence amongst people who inject drugs is 13%. In New Zealand, largely due to the early introduction of needle exchange, it is just 0.2%. But you know, it hasn't always been this way. Ben is an injecting user I know, and he tells me that 30 years ago, it was easier to get drugs than it was new equipment, needles and syringes. He and his friends used to look and search through rubbish bins at the back of veterinary clinics for needles that would have been used on animals. I imagine that many of you have never even seen or heard of a needle exchange. And there's a reason for that. Discretion. Because of the criminalization stigma. You can understand that needle exchanges don't have great big neon lights outside them showing you where they are. So what do they look like and what do they do? Well, from the outside, it just looks like any other building. Step inside, through the door, and over here you'll have some posters and information telling you about injecting practice, health issues and services available. Here we have some of the equipment that's available on display so you can have a look at it. And over here we have what looks like a giant wheelie bin, but it is in fact an industrial hazardous waste disposal unit into which you can put your used needles and syringes. Now, that's a really important part of what we do because that stops used needles and syringes ending up on the street, which is what happens in places which don't have needle exchange. And over here, we have a counter, behind which is our paid peer worker. And by peer, I mean someone who has experience of injecting. One of the most important things about needle syringe programs is that while we're giving you new equipment, information, and advice, we're building a relationship and through that relationship, establishing trust. It's that trust which leads to credibility, and that trust and credibility which means that it's much more likely that you will come back again, ask for inf more information, help or advice and support if you need it. Those who are often most disenfranchised, marginalized, socially and economically excluded, bear the biggest burden. We find higher rates of drug dependency amongst the young, the poor, our rainbow, Māori and Pacific communities because of inequality, not because of some character trait found within these groups. 40% of people entering drug treatment have previous experience of trauma, and for them, drug use is a coping mechanism. Many people self-medicate their mental health through the use of drugs. We have to get real if we want to reduce drug harms. Addressing the drug problem is more than new equipment, health services, and counseling. It's about housing, employment, poverty. It's about economic and social reform. This is a big goal. So we have to start small and it begins with you. So let's not judge. Remember that 150 of you today here in this room will have used drugs, and 30 of you will have experienced difficulties with your drug use at some point. What could harm reduction look like? Street agencies in every city where you could walk in off the street without having to make any commitment to changing or stopping your drug use? An expanded needle exchange and methadone program Mobile services that would outreach into communities so that geography is no longer a barrier to accessing help. Health workers and nurses who are able to dress wounds and carry out health checks. If you have a problem with education, employment or housing, a worker available to help. Naloxone or Narcan, an uh, antidote that can reverse drug overdose, would be freely and widely available we'd be able to test your drugs at places like needle exchanges, festivals, and clubs so that you knew what was in them. And there'd be a system in place to warn users and people working in services of trends and 
different patterns in drug availability, or if there's a bad batch. Drug use would be decriminalized, and we would have a regulated market. Sound fanciful? Well, Portugal did just this in 2004, and the sun hasn't yet fallen out of the sky. And everybody isn't rushing to Portugal on drug-using holidays. In fact, HIV has, is down. Drug-related offending and those going to prison as a result has fallen. And the number of people in treatment has increased. Harm reduction is important because we are a society of drug users. And harm reduce, reduction can help not only to reduce the chance of problems happening in the first place, but they can also stop them getting any worse. There was a time I was a drug user. Harm reduction saved my life. So looking at me now, what do you see? What comes to mind when I say druggy, alcoholic, junkie, meth head, dope head? Harm reduction worked for me, and it works for others. So my message, the war on drugs isn't working. The war on drugs is a war on people who use drugs. So let's drop the stigma and work together to build a world free from drug harms. Thank you.